My slight nervous is building up inside, and I make my way over to see Yuri. The time I've been waiting for has finally come. Once I approach her, I see that she's still enjoying my book. But my concentration is broken as she looks over to me and smiles. Oh, hello again, Zero. I was, was wondering when you would show up. Hi, Yuri. Yeah, I may or may not have got sidetracked most of the day. It is then it is then that I take a moment to see what part of the book she's currently on. Oh, hey, may I see what part of the story you're on? Oh, sure. Carefully hands my book back to me, page is wide open. Once back in my possession, I look around for any random sentence, sentence on the pages and begin to read. Hello, book. How are you doing today? Oh my god! Types New Roman! <laughs> Eyes glistening in the sunlight with a newfound determination, our beloved Ellie takes off into the airplane jungle in an attempt to gather resources. Thoughts of excitement and self-righteousness fills her mind as she thinks about building a shelter for her newly made rhinocer rhinoceros friend. Click outside when done. Oh, oh don't tell me what to do. That's not Times New Roman. <laughs> I, can't, I guess people are taking... Guys, that's not... A, guys, I know it's not actually Times New Roman. I was just making a joke about a font being here. I like my text in Comic Sans. If this text was in Comic Sans, I would, I would downgrade any points. It might be Ariel. It does look like Ariel, honestly. Uh, that, that's what, that was what I was going to say, but Types New Roman's funnier. <laughs> Ooh, this part's good. I think you're gonna like what's coming up next. Oh, is that so? Well, if it's anything like how the rest of this book has been, it'll be nothing short of spectacular. Here she goes being accidentally cute again. But, Zero, I have a request, if that's alright. Oh, what's going on? Well, I still have to explain your issue from earlier today to you, and... I was thinking that we could make some tea beforehand, if that's okay. Yes! Yuri, that would be great. I'd actually really like that. Her warm smile happily makes a return. Then it's settled. I have to mark my spot in your book, and I'll go grab the kettle and tea set. Sounds good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go tell Monica what we're doing, and then I'll meet you at the door, right? Very well. I have to plug in the kettle at the wall where Sayori is first. So we'll take both of us a little bit before we're ready. That's perfectly fine. This is weird. It's like it's like it's like watching two robots talk. <laughs> Start. Like like what what, what is happening? <laughs> With that, she gets up from her desk, and we both go to our separate ways. <laughs> Wait, why do we need to tell Monica what we were doing? Dragon King, don't ask. <laughs> they're, they're, they are socializing, Dragon King. <laughs> do not ask. <laughs> Just let them do what they do. This is this is how, this is how the awkward people <laughs> converse. With that, she gets up from her desk, and we both go our separate ways for a little bit. That is. Why does Monica need to know? They think she does! <laughs> For some reason. <laughs> On my walk over to Monica, I begin thinking of what I'm going to say to her. I wish stuff as simple as telling Monica that me and Yuri are going into the hallway real quick was so difficult when I know I made her concern just a little bit ago. It doesn't take long before I approach her. Looks like she's writing down some stuff. Calling black circles on lines of paper. Actually, no, wait. In this sense, wait, hold on, hold on. in this sense, it makes sense. You know, both of them leaving the club, you know, it's kind of like a, like, it's kind of, I mean, he didn't have to probably walk over and tell her. It's it's one of those where you, it's like where he could just be like, hey, Monica, me and Yuri are going to go outside and get tea. You know, it's one of those things. You know, obviously he could have handled it like that, but you know, because, you know, him and Yuri don't really have the, you know, innate social skills. They kind of just like, I have to go face to face and tell Monica this. Yeah, they're both going outside together, yes. Is she coloring black circles on the lines on paper? Let's say Oreo was the one who like coloring around here. Oh well, I don't judge. Um Monica? Hmm? 
Zero? What's going on? Uh... I thought it'd be appropriate if I told you that me and Yuri will be excusing ourselves from the club for a little bit. Uh, no need to be so formal, silly. But thanks for telling me this time. What's going on? Phew. Okay, uh, me and Yuri are going to be making some tea. That's why we'll be gone for a little bit. Okay, that's fine. But isn't that more of a one-person kind of job? It is, but, you know, I don't know, Monica. D -d 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 don't ask. How am I supposed to respond to that? <laughs> I just want to spend time with my friend, okay? <laughs> all right, all right. I wouldn't dare take time away from you two. Just make enough for everyone, okay? I can really go for some tea right now. <sighs> all right, I'll let her know. I'll be back. No, we'll be back. With that, Monica resumes her coloring and I turn away to walk to the door. Once Yuri and I meet up, we leave the classroom, teapot in her hand, and she leads the way to the closest water fountain. Do, 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 do. Our walk to the fountain started in comfortable silence between the two of us for about five seconds until Yuri surprisingly breaks it. So, what did you need to address with Monica? Oh, that. I just had to tell her what we were doing. I felt it was the right thing to do since this is the third time I left the club room today. The third time? I must not have noticed. I was probably too busy. Absorbed into my book to notice my absence. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I don't know how to put into words how I like it because they're both just so weird with each other, but it's like they have like the same like wavelength of like talking to each other <laughs> to the point where I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> like sure. Yeah, I, gu I guess that was a normal line to him. <laughs> like it's just, ah, oh, she didn't, they have an understanding. Exactly. It's just like, it's like, it, it's so good. I like their mutual understanding with each other. I'm just sitting here like, what? Oh, okay. Yes, he got it. <laughs> they share one brain cell cutely. <laughs> I, I Cutely. Just, it's just they're both just so awkward and they're just like, oh, why did you have to? It's like, fucking. It's like, it's like, what did you need to address with Monica? Oh, I felt it was the right thing to do. It's the third time I left the club room. It's like, oh, I didn't notice. It's like, oh, she must have been too busy to notice my absence. It's like, what? <laughs> like, I guess. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh. It's literally conversation. It's literally the nod and immediately know what you're going for kind of thing. It's like me as the third party to this. I'm just sitting here like, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> like, I'm just like, what the hell is going on? It makes me feel bad for the other girls because <laughs> they have no idea how to interact with this. Not complaining though. Oh, that reminds me. Monica told me to tell you to make enough for everyone. Hmm. Very well then. I tend to anyway. <laughs> there is. All right. There's something about. I will say this. So there's something this mod does a lot, and it's, it it feels so awkward. There's just like pauses. <laughs> we're like just nobody says anything, and we're just like. The, the sprites are just staring at me and the text box goes it goes away. It's like it, it's a little weird sometimes. <laughs> it's happened a few times. Like I feel like I, I feel like what's supposed to be conveyed there is that you know they're walking the time is supposed to be passing with them like walking to where they're supposed to be going. But I feel like it's kind of unnecessary at times because it just feels weird with the sprite just staring at me <laughs> and then the text box is gone and I'm just like Yeah? <laughs> Like, it, 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 it honestly reminds me of the base game where, like, that happened once and you're like, huh? And then it's scared and, like, Yuri, like, glitched and you're like, oh! Like, like, it's like it kind of makes me like, oh, God, what's going to happen? <laughs> like, like it, it puts me on edge sometimes because I'm like, oh! <laughs> right, I know it. We're both at the water fountain about three rooms away from our club room. 
It's also used to show when the character's expressions do most of the speaking. Yeah, it's like, but sometimes, like, the expression they have is just, like, a blank smile. <laughs> like, or, like, what well, Yuri's expression was it just a blank expression of her just staring at me, just like... <laughs> and then just, like, oh, okay, there we go, now there's the wipe left. <laughs> like, thank you, Yuri. I don't know, it just feels awkward. The hallway is nice and silent. Nobody's around to bother us. It's so silent, the music stopped. <laughs> Yuri takes her teapot and starts filling it up while I wait beside her. I can't help but laugh to myself at the thought of pretending to be her bodyguard at this point in time. That's when Yuri looks over to me. Zero? What's so funny? Oh, just something silly I thought of. Nothing too important. Hmm. Care to share? Seems a little embarrassing to share something like that to her. I don't know how she'd react. Wait a second. Yuri, the teapot! Huh? Oh! Looks like I alerted her at just the right time, as her teapot isn't quite overflowing, but dangerously close to. She quickly takes her hands away from the water fountain. Thanks, Zero. I guess that's what I get for not paying attention. No worries. That happens to me quite often, so you're not alone. Well... Good to know I'm not alone, then. See, it worked in that part. Yeah, that, that part was fine. But it's like, some of the other times, it's like, they're just staring at me, and it makes me feel weird. <laughs> I don't think I ever want her to be alone. Sometimes she has to be alone. <laughs> Shall we head back now? Yeah, so let's. So now, full teapot in hand, we continue our walk back to the class to classroom. But Yuri's walking a little more slowly than our journey to the fountain. I'm guessing she's being careful about not wanting to spill water all over the place. Taking that into consideration, I slow down my pace in order for her to keep up. It always seems like the right thing to do. Hey, Yuri. Yes, Zero? I hope I don't sound rude. But earlier today, right before lunchtime... Probably would sound rude if I straight up ask her why she keeps garbage in her bag all the time. <laughs> Yuri, why get all that garbage? <laughs> Clean out your bag, Yuri. <laughs> I was wondering why you keep so much stuff in your bag. Oh, well, I hope you don't think I'm a hoarder or anything. It's actually the opposite. I prefer to be a neat freak most of the time. That's cool. And I can respect that. I can't stand having my house to be a disaster. Hmm. I feel the same. To answer your question, though, the first thing I do when I arrive home from school is to take everything out of my bag and put only the essentials back in. It's almost like I'm starting with a clean slate every day. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. That There's a really nice feeling that comes from having everything nice and organized. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> like yes <laughs> was she waiting for me to answer I'm sorry Yuri yes I agree <laughs> two seconds pass by before I speak up again hey Yuri I know I've said this already but I'm still really happy that you gave my book a chance I never really get to share my interests or stuff with anyone oh yeah something in common with Natsuki and the reminder of Natsuki telling me that Yuri wouldn't give her manga a chance, and a weird feeling of appreciation for Yuri makes itself known to me over what I just told her. But I can see her smile slowly disappearing. Wait, what? You saw that as a good thing? <laughs> Wait a minute! And the reminded of Natsuki telling me that Yuri wouldn't give her manga a chance, and a weird feeling of appreciation for Yuri makes itself known to me over what I just told her. You see how that's a good- that's mean! <laughs> it's just like, man, freaking I remember then, she wouldn't even read what Natsuki read, so she wants to read my stuff? Oh, th oh man. Like, oh, you didn't take that as, wow, Yuri's kind of an asshole for not even trying what Natsuki wants. God damn it, MC! You're too blinded! <laughs> He's blinded by her! Is he can't see any of our faults! <laughs> no, MC, no! <laughs> it's- it's okay, though. It's understandable. The Natsuki slander continues. <laughs> nah, yeah, it's understandable. We've already we we've already seen that he's blinded by uh, by her faults earlier. We saw it when um he was trying to reprimand quotations. He was trying to reprimand them the uh, the day before, and he literally just focused on Natsuki and said nothing to Yuri. 
So, yeah, it's like, we, we've seen his bias a lot. This MC has a very heavy bias towards Yuri. As the story shows, so. As long as the story doesn't treat it as if it's, a go like, a normal thing, it's fine. Which, clearly, when we saw how Monica reprimanded them, obviously, it was, you know, it's like, the story doesn't treat it as a good thing. They just treat it as a... I do wonder if it will bring up a problem, though. You know? Like, I wonder if his bias towards Yuri will, like, be an issue where it's like he might actually, like... Yuri might do something that he's just... It would just will completely shock him to his core because he has so much of a bias towards her. He's like, what? How would Yuri do such a thing like that? Yuri wouldn't do that. <laughs> you know? Like, I actually Yuri do wonder. Yuri would never cut herself. Yeah, so, like, it makes me wonder, like, yeah, if Yuri will do something, like, slightly negative and he'll just, like, kind of just be very confused. I wonder. I am curious about that. It would be interesting. About to see. <laughs> Natsuki Slider continues as it should. All these, oh, all these Natsuki haters in the chat. Oh, no. Like and retweet if you're a real Natsuki or the Natsuki fandom is dying. <laughs> you can see your smile slowly disappearing. Well, it's nothing really, Zero. I understand the feeling of keeping hobbies to oneself. Sometimes it feels like being trapped in a cage, whereas other times it's nice to avoid potential judgment from others. Dang, trapped in a cage? I never thought of it that way. Well, that's one way of putting it. Oh, speaking of which, do you still have the book I gave you yesterday? I still do. It's been in my backpack the whole time. Now that I think about it, I haven't even checked out the name of her book. I really should get around to that. Oh, do you think we could read your book after we finish mine? Yes, I think I would enjoy that. You've been quite the help with explaining things about your book. In all fairness, I should probably do the same with mine. I like that. Sounds like a good time. But, I still have quite a bit of your book left to go. That's okay. I didn't expect us to finish my book today. I expect us to finish my book today. I'm certain we'll still have a few days left until that happens. Ah, uh, you're probably right. Once I approach the club room door, I take the initiative to open the door for Yuri, so she has her hands full. She gives me a bright smile as she walks in. That's probably her way of saying thanks, and it makes me feel all warm and tingly inside. It feels nice to do nice things like this for my friend. I like this feeling. <laughs> I too enjoy doing nice things! <laughs> do you, chat? Tell me! You can't, because chat's mean. Look at chat. Chat's angry. Chat's all like, Arr. we're mean, Zero. We're a bunch of mean men. We don't like doing nice things because we're mean. Arr. Arr. <laughs> See, Gar, <laughs> See, look, they're, look, they're evil. They're Gar, <laughs> men. Where? Well, well, and women. I, I don't want to, I don't want to assume. There might be women in the chat as well. Men and women, of course. <laughs> Fuck everybody. See? Look at them. They're evil. See? Look at them. Evil chat. Punches. Oh my god, see? They're, they're causing violence! Army made it, and they're pirates! <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> see? They're so mean, they're giving me 50 cents! Me being a woman. See, guys? See? We can't assume. I'm sorry. <laughs> see? Gentlemen and women. Gentle women. What, what the fuck do you call them? <laughs> Ladies. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the 50 bits, gaming nerd. I ran out of snacks. I have no happiness left in my soul. Well, that's sad. Oh my god. Thank you for the 666 bits, Lubitina. See, chat's evil! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, it's evil! Evil chat. Once we're both inside and the door is closed, Gary looks over to me. Zero, I'm going to finish up making. I'm going to finish up making the tea. We're both going to distribute cups to everyone in, in the class. Can you take care of Monica and Sayori for me? I'll handle Natsuki so you don't have to. Oh, thank goodness. Of course. Excellent. Man, doing this must put her in a really good mood or something. I'm guessing this is something she enjoys doing. I walk over to Yuri's desk. I reach down to grab my backpack from its usual spot and take it with me over to her desk. Once I'm over there, I place my backpack right on top of her desk and grab an unused chair adjacent to hers to bring it close. But this time, I don't place it directly next to hers. 
Instead, the chair is placed parallel to hers on the opposite side so that I'd be facing her. Taking a seat, I open up my book bag to find the book that Yuri gave me. Oh, someone redeemed emote only chat. I did not see that. I was wondering why Libertina was trying to talk in bits. Alright, sorry chat. You're gonna have to sit in emote only for a few for a few minutes. Someone redeemed it. Looks like it's a little bit bigger than my book. Ah! Oh, what the fuck? Oh no! I clicked out of the game! Its cover is a nice dark shade of purple. It's almost like Gary's hair. The square is placed in the middle of the book with a concrete building on a, glassy, on a grassy plain in the shape of a castle's belittlement with a princess looking out of one of the cranials on the cover. <gasps> oh my god! That's the thing! They're explaining the thing! Bro, is the, we're, are we finally getting to figure out why it's called Our Castle Walls? The book is titled An Unlikely Hero. I don't think I've ever heard of this in my life. <laughs> I think I'll give it some attention another time. What's Yuri up to? Having spotted Yuri over near the closet, she seems to be carrying a paper bag with what I'm assuming are tea leaves or tea bags or something. Watching her movements as she's preparing the tea for everyone, she seems to move with such elegance and grace. Something I would probably expect from Monica, but the scene in front of me is quite mesmerizing. Just like how stunning she was when I saw her at the lake yesterday for the first time. The smile makes its way onto my face after thinking about the events of yesterday for a little bit, but I'm broken out of my trance as I remember that Yuri wanted me to hand cups of tea out to everyone. Yeah, I think it's time to give her a hand now. Placing my backpack on the ground to the right of my seat and then standing up from my Yuri's desk. I'll go over to the now stemming teapot to see she's pouring tea in separate glass cups she keeps in the room. Is it time, Yuri? Yes, but please be careful. We won't want anything to break now. I'll play it safe then. One at a time. Uh, how Sagagagus of you. What? Is that Saga Gages? What? Alright, time to get my good old pal Google. Sagacious. Sagacious. Thank you. <laughs> uh, how sagacious of you. Yeah, that. Taking one of the cups over to Sayori. She grabs it from me and thanks me. Walking back to the, sur the surplus of teacups we have, and I grab another one. Walking over, walking over to where Monica is, while trying not to burn my fingers, I carefully set it down in front of her. Zero. Huh? Yeah? Oh, nothing. Just wanted to say hi. Thanks for the tea, by the way. What was the point of that? I put myself scratching the back of my head. Uh, yeah, no problem. Turning away from her, I return to where the teacups initially were, only to find Yuri patiently waiting for me. Did I say saving the best for last? Nah, that might sound too conceited. I decide to speak up as she pours a cup for me and her. You really do do this properly, don't you? He said doo-doo! Ha! He said doo-doo! You gotta get the laugh track for that one! <laughs> <laughs> it only seems appropriate. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Looks away and blushes for the 64th time. Especially for my friend. I up bury my head in my hands as my smile grows bigger. Wait, was, was that was that 64? That's a fucking square. That's a, that's a square root number. What the fuck is this? <laughs> the square root of 64? <laughs> she looks away and blushes for the square root of 64th time? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Eight? <laughs> I kind of really like it when she says that. Taking a moment to recover from the sudden blood rush to my face, I take one of the teacups and carefully make my way back to Yuri's desk, with her following behind me. Once I take a seat at my spot at her desk and place my teacup down, first thing I do is blow on it and take a sip. That's when Yuri takes her respective seat, and we're facing each other now. Yuri, that cup is very- that cup is as big as your boobs. 
Can you tell that I'm really good at breaking the ice? I will see myself out now. All right. Uh, goodbye, everybody. That is the end of the stream. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at her boobs, Zero? <laughs> Bring in Moni, please. No, Monica doesn't know I made that. She doesn't have to know. Monica's gone. She's not here, chat. No, no, no. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> you tell me right now, mister. I didn't do anything. You tell me right now or you're grounded. I... <laughs> what? <laughs> no. I made it. I said, Yuri, that... Me and Yuri were sitting down and, you know, I broke the ice and said, Yuri, that cup is as big as your boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you say that to her? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you have autism. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have you know, we took a test yesterday, and I mean, it's not yesterday, it was weeks ago. I'll have you know, we took a test a few weeks ago, and Cam is the one that scored the highest. <laughs> Cam, Cam has the highest autism score. <laughs> to be fair, those tests mean nothing, though. I look back at your parsec. He's not really watching you play the mod. He's listening. And all I see is... Mm. <laughs> He's drinking the tea! Mmm. 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 Yeah, just... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's where he takes a respective seat. We're facing each other now. There's no possible way I can hide my happiness at this point. Hmm. No, no. Mmm. <laughs> this was such a good idea. I agree. This makes my time in the club that much better. I can understand why. I can help feel more comfortable and somewhat safe right now. Thanks to the relaxing feeling, the warmth and taste of the tea, and also being this close to my friend. Life is good. Oh, I just remembered something. Uh. Not without a word, I reached down to my backpack, pull out the chocolate bar I bought earlier. Tearing off the top half of the wrapper, I break off two pieces, place them on, on my half of the desk, and break off two more and place them on Yuri's side of the desk. This is for you. Oh, you don't have to do that. Thanks. I smile warmly at her and enjoy my snack I brought, to which she happily follows suit. Taking another sip of my tea, I take a moment to think about what's exactly going on. And this is quite the situation I'm in. Chocolate, tea, an adorable girl in front of me. How lucky can a guy get? Would this be considered a date? <gasps> I wonder what Yuri thinks of this right now. Anyway, I think it's about time we get started. This is a really long club day. <laughs> this is a really long day at the club. And then snapped out of my inquisitive stupor. Right. You know, time. you know what they say about love? It slows the world down around you. We were doing other stuff not about love! <laughs> <laughs> I feel more than ready for whatever info dump she's about to give. Alright, so most important, do you know what a verb is? Uh, isn't that an action word? Yes, you could say that. Almost every sentence requires one. You know, words like run, exist, break, the list goes on. This is important to know if we want to understand what adverbs are. Before we get to that, we must bring up adjectives. Wait, does he not know what an adverb is? I thought- like, He didn't say he didn't know what those were. He said why they have ad- Why adjective and adverb share the same AD. Wait, was his question oh. that he didn't know what adverbs were? I thought this question was something else. How? Huh. This was like this was, I was like this wasn't his question. Yeah, you're expl you're over explaining. <laughs> She's like me. Let's start from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I was like, correct. Wondering okay. why they start with AD. Yeah, okay. So Yuri's just over explaining, I guess. Okay. Because <laughs> I was about to say, I'm pretty sure any anybody in this club room would know what an adverb is. <laughs> So I was like, okay, no, she's just over explaining because she's Yuri. Okay, got it. <laughs> she's Yuri splaining. <laughs> Yuri splaining. Do you know how those work? Adjectives, yeah. Like I said earlier, words that describe something. Exactly. For example, words like difficult, friendly, valuable, those can be used to describe a noun. Memories from first grade elementary school come rushing back to me. 
Mostly good ones. I remember, I remember what those are. Person, place, or thing, right? Yes. Notice how adjectives are used to modify a noun? That's exactly what adverbs do to regular verbs. Tell me the first verb that comes to your mind. Uh, walk. Hmm, okay. Here he seems to be deep in thought right now, but returns back to normal after a little bit, and also after some tea between me and her. Okay, so slow is an adjective we can use for this. Remember how I said that adverbs directly modify a verb? Yeah. Well, turn slow into slowly, and that's how it works. Although I don't think slowly walk sounds right. In this case, the adverb would come directly after to make everything sound proper. I hope this makes sense. Well, I understand how those two work now, but I'm still confused about why they start with AD. <laughs> I was about to say, Yuri is... Yuri! <laughs> Yuri. Yuri, he wasn't asking about what... <laughs> Gary, he wasn't asking about what adverbs were. <laughs> he was asking why they have AD. <laughs> Yuri was like, I can explain what an adverb is. <laughs> ah, you're right. The prefix AD. This might be a little bit hard to understand, but when ad is used as prefix, it means it's trying to bring you towards something. I think I feel my brain hurting by trying to figure this out. When someone advertises something, they're trying to turn your attention towards what they have. If something needs to be adjusted, wouldn't you say it needs to be tilted towards what you prefer? Oh. When you're on an adventure, wouldn't it seem incomplete if challenges and dangers were not presented towards you? That's not AD, that's ARD. <laughs> Does that still work? <laughs> There's an R there. <laughs> Does he still count? <laughs> it's Latin. And? <laughs> it's gonna ignore R? That's not very nice. What did R do? <laughs> oh, I guess the word adventure. Oh, okay. I was looking at the word torts. <laughs> I was focusing on the word torts. She kept saying, they kept putting emphasis on torts. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Towards? All oh, right, okay. <laughs> Advance? Yeah. Fucking, yeah. That's what I was like, okay, no, now I understand what she's saying. I was like, what? I was like, but towards? I was like, towards? That's, that's, that's A or R D. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> Zero, maybe you need your split. I really don't. I knew what an adverb was. <laughs> I did not need all of that before. <laughs> you literally missed the entire point. I was just looking at one word, chat. <laughs> I was just miss looking at the word. I just wasn't looking at the right word she was saying. I was looking at towards the entire time instead of the AD. And that's where I was like, oh, okay. Because I understood what she said. I was just like, wait, but where is it? I was like, oh, okay, it's those words. All right. I'm getting a little sidetracked. Are you? What? How? What? We explained it, huh? <laughs> this is on topic. I'm sorry. You got sidetracked before. <laughs> Yuri's actually kind of cute when she over talks like this. No need to be sorry. I kind of like where this is going. Where we were going was answering the question. <laughs> what do you mean we got sidetracked? <laughs> like we were, we were, you were giving examples. That was the topic. The ADs were italicized. Yeah, but it was only the AD that was italicized. And not consistently, mind you, because they're not italicized in adventure right here. <laughs> so take that, the gaming nerd. You've been bamboozled. <laughs> they're not always italicized. They weren't italicized in adventure. <laughs> small, small replaces her apprehensive face. Very well, then. To get to the point, adjectives are descriptive words placed towards a noun, whereas adverbs tend to be near or towards a verb. Ah, there we go. That makes so much more sense. Fantastic. Now for a real challenge. Oh? Give me a sentence with an adverb, a verb, and a noun all in the same sentence, and I'll tell you how, how well you've done. Oh boy. 
He's really putting me on the spot here. Let's see. Takes a few moments of thinking, but I think I got this down. I gently open the door. Raven coughs out of nowhere. <laughs> Maybe it's dusty over there or something. That works. Now give me another sentence, this time with only a present form verb and a noun. Present form. Mm-hmm. For example, roll will turn into rolling. She does a weird circular motion with her finger as if to demonstrate what she means. Ah, okay. All right, thinking of something shouldn't be too hard. Don't take long for another sentence to come to mind. Swinging open the door, I... Ow! Paper cut! As he gets up from a chair and leaves the room. Well, all right, I suppose that works. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to make sense of that issue for you. And that's Yuri's writing tip of the day. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> wow, Yuri, you're so smart. Why aren't you the club president? The look on her face turns from bashful to one of slight embarrassment. Oh goodness, I don't dare think about taking on such a responsibility. Yuri would freeze if you ask her what we're doing today. <laughs> I was about to say, Yuri can't be the president. <laughs> hey, Yuri, I'm here. So, what are we doing today? Um, uh, 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 I'm sorry for asking. <laughs> Monica seems like the perfect fit for that role. Ah, uh, yeah, I can see that. Much responsibility seems scary at times. I concur. By the way, Zero, don't you have English with Professor... I uh, thought it was Professor Hall. Professor Holly? Hmm? Oh, I know what she's talking about now. She's the English teacher for people that are not in special education. <laughs> Alright, I feel like now after the third... <laughs> After the third laugh track, I should say something. Yeah, I mean, I've already talked about I'm not a big fan of references. I feel like I'm kind of getting bombarded with references right now. <laughs> I feel like I'm being shot with a cannon. <laughs> this is too much! <laughs> no, that's one of my special education classes. Oh. I didn't know. It's okay. I have that class professor Julian, but everyone calls him Snow for whatever reason. It's really nice and doesn't mind helping me understand stuff like this. I feel the blood rush to my face again. Just like how you do. A level of blush makes a return. God, if I'm not torturing her. It'd be bad. Oh, you're too kind. I don't deserve a friend as nice as you. Just like I said yesterday, I wouldn't have it any other way. There's a somewhat awkward silence between us for a while before I remember that we'd still have some time left to read some of my book. Oh, what about my book? Hmm? Ah, uh, yes, we should probably get back to that. As I reach down her bag to retrieve my book, I stand up for my seat in front of her, grab said seat, and carefully bring it around so that's directly next to hers. What's the snow one? I don't know, but it's definitely a reference. <laughs> what it's a reference to, I don't know, but it probably is. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. References are personal gripes for me, though, I guess. I don't know. I just, like I said, references just, they take me out all the time. It's like, it's, it's hard for me to be, stay immersed when it's like I'm being constantly reminded, like, that, ha! Huh, this is a mod. <laughs> or, you know, it's like, you know, like, like it's just, I don't know. It takes me out the experience, and I'm just kind of sitting there like, oh. <laughs> Bring my teacup closer towards me. I then take a seat. Once I'm up close to her, I take my respective side of the book in our, in our one-of-a-kind formation. But nothing happens for a few seconds. Uh, Gary? What part are you at? Oh, sorry. I'm right here. Points to the sentence in the book where she last left off reading. Ah, alright. That's when I start reading alongside her. 
After a page or two of reading, my focus on the story becomes less and less as I can't help but wonder for myself what's going on in Yuri's mind as she ventures through my story. I've been killed. Yet his favorite mod is Relapse. Whose favorite mod is Relapse? Mine? Because because not. <laughs> I thought that was your favorite. I think I feel like you're getting your favorite mod confused with my favorite mod, Libertine. I could have sworn you said your favorite mod was Relapse. I never said my favorite mod was Relapse. <laughs> also, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Monica, don't look at the screen. Huh? I can explain. Huh? Huh? Actually, I don't think I can. <laughs> this is a dream. Inside Yuri's mind. Okay. Why? Why is Yuri a cave woman in her mind? <laughs> I don't know. I can't wait for my sprite to pop up. It's a scourger outside. Despite all the various banana and palm trees surrounding me. Oh, this is Yuri talking. Right? This is in Yuri's mind. It's a scourger outside. Despite all the various banana and palm trees surrounding me. But I can endure such an atmosphere. I have to. I could cool down in the broken down airplane that lays abandoned in this jungle. But I don't think I have the time for that right now. I have an important job at hand. There's no turning back right now. What the fuck is happening? I think she's imagining herself in, like, one of her books. Well, we're reading a book, so I guess she's imagining herself in the book? She's probably using the main character as, like, a her. A lot of people do that. Hold up. Uh, this. Oh, yeah, right. They're, but their book they're reading is something about a jungle, right? I forgot. My journey into the airplane jungle is about halfway finished. As I still have various resources to collect for the shelter that Ellie and I are supposed to make tonight. Brandishing my pocket knife, I begin my climb up the banana tree in front of me. Once I'm at the top, I give myself support with my left arm and both legs. I grab my pocket knife and tear away at the base of the leaves, making sure they fall to the ground. And then I do the same for the various banana bunches that thrive on this tree. Once this task is complete and I begin my journey downwards, a somewhat familiar voice makes itself known. What the hell is happening? <laughs> so much <chat>. huh? <laughs> Guys, it's just a story. Did you not hear the voice line? I did, but I don't know why. <laughs> Was that a man? <laughs> it's Kratos. Once I reach the ground and regain my footing, I see two monkeys running up to me. I know them. Candace and Joey. Of course, Candace and Joey. Although he wants to be called the Green Mixtape for, for whatever reason. Seriously, can we please stop referencing? <laughs> we are on like our twin reality. We are on our two realities levels. Who the fuck is the Green Mixtape? I don't know. I won't judge him for having a nickname he wants to go by. Uh, hello again, you two. Candace is the first to speak. Lady Yuri, it's good that these are monkeys, so like... You know what? Fuck it. They get regular voices. <laughs> what gender are these monkeys? <laughs> is, this, is this a girl? It's, a, it's pink text. I don't fucking know. Is Candace a girl? <laughs> what about the other monkey? What was his name? Wow, you're gonna assume gender just because of the color of text they use? Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just gonna use my voice. Fuck it. These are monkeys. Monkeys can't talk. <laughs> hey, Yuri, it's good to see you again. This guy has his own voicing, I guess. I'm very glad he does. Right, I forgot he's known for his incessant yelling. Oh, I'm about halfway done with gathering resources for today. Looking down at the banana bunches in front of me, an idea comes to mind. How does snack time sound, boys? Oh, now I have to voice him? <laughs> Sounds the, the great! Voice give you gender. Just don't give Candace the green ones. He hates anything green. Why? <laughs> Laughing to myself quietly as Candace rolls his eyes. Rolls his, okay, so that's a boy. It's a boy monkey. Okay. 
I sit down, my back against the banana tree I just climbed. Grabbing a banana bunch and tearing off three bananas from the bunch I've harvested. I distribute them evenly among us. Don't sit- Don't! Don't! Don't do it! It's been a while since I last ate today. I'm gonna need the energy for what I have left to do. At one point in time during snack time, a rumbling of the earth can be heard. Taking a moment to figure out where such sound is coming from. I scan the area to see a, rhino a rhinoceros running towards the three of us with something green tied around his horn. From the looks of it, he also seems to be riding a giant frog riding on his back. Once the both of them make their approach, the frog immediately jumps off the rhino and bounces onto my lap, happily making himself at home. Who is this? This frog from Chrono Trigger? <laughs> Who the fuck is this? What is happening? <laughs> Lady Yuri, I haven't seen you in so long. A genuine smile appears on my, my face as I carefully place my free hand on the frog's forehead. His rough texture doesn't really feel that bad. Winky, I'm happy to see you too. Sorry I haven't been around your part of the woods to visit lately. No worries, we're all real, we're all busy at times. Soft croaking noises can be heard from him as he happily rests for a bit. My attention is then averted to the rhinoceros seems to be having difficulty trying to remove the vines from his trunk. This is Rambi and that is Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> I'll say it again. When's, I when's Hunter the Cheetah showing up? He's never showing up. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> he died when he was like, Whoa! Wow! I'll say it again, I guess. These jungle seas may seem random, but they're for foreshadowing purposes. <laughs> All right, but I will say, <laughs> I will say to a degree so far, I feel like these jungle scenes, if they are semi-important, they I feel like, I don't know. There's something about them I feel like could be handled better. You should really hold back the references and the lore important scenes. Yeah, that's what I was about to say too. Because yeah, because these scenes don't feel important at all. Like, this just feels like a shitpost scene. Like, if they're important, I feel like they should be kind of handled a little more seriously. Because, like, right now, this feels like this was taken out of a... It feels like I switched to a shitpost mod. <laughs> With frogs and Donkey Kong Country rhinoceroses. <laughs> a friend that Ellie and I made recently. I'm soon to be recipient of the shelter that will be made later tonight. It makes me happy that I'm going to be helping a friend with this with his everyday life. <sighs> does the rhinoceros talk in Donkey Kong Country? <laughs> I don't think he does, but I don't know a voice yet. No. Hey guys, a little help here. <laughs> Both of the monkeys then get up from their spot and walk over to help him out. Connus takes the vines off Rambi's horn, but ends up getting tangled in them. Yeah, ends up getting tangled in them himself. Oh, I messed it up, dude. Uh, okay. I'm watching like a YouTube video, clearly. <laughs> it's like it's like someone's riffing over this. I'm riffing over this. Get your riffs out of here. <laughs> I'm supposed to be the one doing this. I still question why he thinks it's necessary to shout most of the time. After a little bit, the vines are gingerly placed next to the banana leaf pile I've accumulated. <sighs> here, in the, here are the vegetable ropes I gathered for you, Lady Yuri. Hello. Oh. <laughs> They're called vines. But thank you nonetheless. Uh, anytime. I must run off now. I'll be at the West River Plains if you need me again. I thought I thought Rambi was a girl. I don't know what Rambi is, okay? Rambi's a rhinoceros. <laughs> <laughs> Rambi is a girl. Rambi's a rhinoceros. <laughs> <laughs> Rambi's a fictional rhinoceros. <laughs> I don't blame him for wanting to spend time there. Also, they're calling him a him, so shut up. <laughs> well, they're stupid. There's a beautiful chasm over that way that divides the west and east river plains. It's definitely a relaxing area. I should visit there again sometime. All right, please be safe. With that, Rambi turns around and runs off as the task for the day is now complete. Reverting my vision upwards towards the sky, I take a moment to let my mind wander and relax for a bit. 
all within the company of my amphibious and orangutan friends. But this doesn't last long. I just remember the other jobs that must be completed before dusk. I think it's time for me to take my leave now. I look down to Winky, still on my lap, relieved that he hasn't fallen asleep yet. Will you be able to make it home and safe? I should be just fine. Alright, if you say so. I then arise from my spot by the trees to look towards my other two friends and smile. Farewell, you two. They both wave to me as I begin my walk towards the broken down airplane. It only takes a few steps of mine before hearing that unforgettable yelling again. I swear that boy's never going to change, is he? Within the short walk to the airplane, I take out my pocket knife again as I will be harvesting hibiscus flowers. There's an abundance of them growing by the old airplane, not to mention a variety of colors among them. Excitement builds up inside me as the thought of being able to decorate something that I've taken part in building. However, once I approach the airplane, my excitement quickly becomes downcast at the sight of my parrot friend, Squawks, <laughs> who is taking shelter inside the airplane with a rather gloomy face. Hey, is everything all right? And that's when he looks up to meet my gaze. No! Lady Yuri, is there any way you could help me out? I can at least try. Please tell me what's wrong. He takes a moment to regain his composure. My darling Perry is stuck in the Skull Rock jungle. She got herself caught in one of our one of the Squitters web again. I know who he's talking about. Squitter is freakishly large and non-venomous spider that roams around these jungles. But he prefers to be called shoes, as he somehow managed to obtain for four pairs of shoes for himself. Ooh, that troublemaker! Well, it's a good thing I'm heading that way in the first place. I'll go investigate for you. I was planning to go there mainly because of the excessive amount of bamboo that grows around that area. But now I have more reasons to head that way. Thanks, you're the best! I smile back at him and quickly make my way over to the dark cave that's on the opposite side of this jungle. I have to pass through there if I want access to the Skull Rock jungle. That's another DK character. I think this entire thing is a DK reference. <laughs> <laughs> they don't call this place the Dark Cave for no reason. Inside here is much quieter than outside. No other related elements to deal with. Stones of various sizes are scattered all around the area. Stalactites cover the ceiling in certain spots, and there are a few obsidian de depots around. Deposits? Depots? If only I had made a stone hammer and stone chisel. I could use both of these tools to harvest obsidian to potentially create my very own knife. I can't help but giggle at the thought of creating my very own knife collection out here in the wilderness. I could start a new life as an, ars as an artisan, forging and etching my own designs into knives I make. It would be like a dream come true. Right. Back to more important matters. It's a miracle I remember my way around this cave. As I haven't been around here in a while. If memory serves me right. The way out of here is to the Skull Rock jungle is on the exact opposite side of this cave. One rather long yet peaceful walk to the other side. I stop in my tracks as I realize I have a small yet steep hill to traverse in order to reach the jungle. Okay, this shouldn't be too bad. I can handle this. Taking a moment to breathe freely, I approach the passage in front of me and begin to climb one limb at a time. Her outfit distracts me. <laughs> Why is the font pixely? It's a book. Yeah, the pixely font is kind of hard to read. <laughs> One minute later, and I have reached the top. Exhaustion is slowly starting to become apparent. And is growing more and more due to the heat I'm subjecting myself to again. But I must keep moving. Before I begin my journey towards the giant... <laughs> that says bamboo, right? Okay, I was about to say, it looked like bamboo. Bamboo patch that grows in this jungle. I can't help but notice a very faint buzzing sound. Almost like a beehive. Standing still to inspect the area. My eyes land on a noticeably large beehive hanging from a giant tree in the middle of this jungle. But no swarms of bees are present. 
Well, I know where to avoid walking now. Traversing through the varied wildlife around me, I make my way over to the massive clay pit that's close to the mini bamboo field, only to see a giant spider web constructed in between a mango tree and lychee fruit tree. Lychee fruit. Those remind me of a special someone who wrote a permanent spot in my heart. Those are his all-time favorite. If only I weren't so far away from you. Oh, how I miss you, so. <sighs> There's that buzzing sound again, but it's louder than the last time I heard it. What on earth is going on? There's no bees around. I haven't been out in the heat for that long. Maybe my mind is, pay pl is playing tricks on me? And I should probably ignore it. There are more important matters at hand. One glance at both trees shows a yellow quetzal with red and blue feathers. Stuck in the web, trying to break free from the imprompt prison she's found herself in. I think this is my time to shine. Approaching both trees, I brandish my pocket knife yet again, just in case I need it. Harry, what's going on? I, 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 what, what, what does a quetzal sound like? What the... Ah! I wasn't paying attention to where I was flying, and now I'm trapped here. Did Squawk send you over here? He did. Allow me to help. Please hold still for a bit. Carefully grabbing hold of Perry with my left hand. I slowly yet skillfully slashed away at the spider web in an attempt to rescue her. After a few draining moments, Perry is free from the web. And also free from any remaining web that may have stuck to her. Taking a moment to store my knife away. I bring both my hands together for Perry to rest on them. Thanks, Lady Yuri. You're a lifesaver. Squawk! <laughs> for I am bird! She then playfully jumps around and gives me a quick peck on the cheek. Is she flirting with her bird right now? I don't know what's happening, okay? I've long checked out of what's going on. <laughs> it's nothing, really. Now let's learn from our mistakes, shall we? Stellar <laughs> voice acting zero. Thank you. <laughs> ah! Squawk! <laughs> you know Squawk! it! Where did Squawk fly off to? Oh, he's over by the rundown airplane right now. Without another word, Perry flies towards the dark cave to return to her better half. Phew. That's done. Now for the bamboo. I cannot ignore that cursed buzzing sound any longer as it becomes louder and louder as the seconds pass. I aggravated at the possible real realization that I might be going insane. I start frantically looking around the area in hopes to disprove such thoughts. That's why I look up to the sky to see several dozen mechanical bees with buzz saws for stingers invading the sky. My blood runs cold and my eyes widen at the sight as I am frozen in place. That's when I hear the trumpeting, the trumpeting scream of an elephant. That was not an elephant. That was an elephant! I don't know what you mean. That was... Ah! That was what that was. That was an elephant! It went... It barely sounded like an elephant from here. I was about to make an elephant noise, but all my elephant noise sounded like Gruntilda. As <laughs> <laughs> if I tried to do it, I'm going... <laughs> 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 that must be Ellie. But that sound more high-pitched and distressed than her usual tone, which brings me even less at ease. <laughs> but then, Just like the... Ah, ah, that sounds like Ellie. <laughs> that must be Ellie. That's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> Within seconds, I see her running towards me at such unstoppable speed that I've never seen in all my life. But her eyes are widening out of fear. <laughs> Jerry, get out of here! Chaos is coming! Who? Chaos? Okay, chaos? Wait, wait! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Chaos. That's chaos. It's, is it chaos with K A O S? Yes, chaos. Why is it pronounced that way? I don't know how to pronounce it. Wait, wait. It's, it's not, that's not normally how it's spelled. Ka the Skylander? Let's get out. 
The Skylander villain. His name is Chaos. <laughs> I don't think that's it. <laughs> that's someone said from Skylanders. <laughs> like, you gotta see him on Monday, chat. <laughs> if you watch my stream. She's now several feet away from me, still keeping up speed. Nobody around here drops the her uh, drops the honorific from my name unless it's absolutely crucial. Looking up at the sky again. Past the bees is a green mechanical jet propelled robot flying through the sky with a stainless steel skull as a head. I don't think he's from Skylanders. <laughs> no. Mechanical arms with boxing gloves attached and saw blades that protrude in 360 its whole body. Like that a, must be a chaos. Egg Did Eggman make it? I, I don't know what this is. I, don't, I actually have never played Skylanders. I don't know if this chaos guy uses robots. No. no. Ka chaos is like this little like... like Oh, and one of the guy. bosses from Donkey Kong Country. Okay, and he's, and he's, okay. And he's voiced by the guy who voices Zim. It's so he, imagine yeah, that no, voice. Yeah, no, it says it's a boss from Donkey Kong Country 3. Of course, of course. What is happening? <laughs> Can I go home now? <laughs> Several grenades are dropped from the inside compartments of the bees above. I just <laughs> joined in, and what the <laughs> fuck did I join into? <laughs> Computer Geek, what are you talking about? This is our castle walls. My eyes widened even more. The later of my fight, fight or flight response kicks in and I run as fast as I can towards the dark cave. As I'm running, explosions can be heard in the background, each one increasing my adrenaline. Wait, Rambi's over that way. That's where the chasm is. What? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> no, get out of there. It's not safe here. <laughs> Why? Oh my God. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Oh! <laughs> what? <are> getting closer. <laughs> As are the various agonizing screams of my fellow animal. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck, bro? As I approach the entrance to the dark cave, I turn around to begin my descent, only to see blood and skeleton matter splashed across the base of the trees in front of me. What the fuck? What? The sickening sight in front of me brings me to tears, which makes it hard to focus on my climb downwards. <laughs> ah! <laughs> the wild thought coming from the closet snaps me out of my story. I skip every. Look to my left, I get a glimpse of Natsuki laying on her back in the closet, which does make me a bit concerned. My attention is then over... Oh, this is Yuri, right? Look to the left, I get a glimpse of Natsuki laying on her back in the closet, which does make me a bit concerned. My attention is overpowered by my sense of balance being slightly thrown off, almost dropping Zero's book. Looking to my right. Zero has completely let go of his side of the book because he's covering his ears and has his, hand, his head down on our desk. I can't believe the sight, of, the, the sight in front of me as I quickly look around the room and attempt to think of what to do. What? What happened while Yuri was like, going to war? <laughs> what? Oh, goodness. Was it really that loud? Oh, wait. She's... Oh, wait. Oh, something. Okay. A loud thud coming from the closet. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, no. What do I do? Never had to deal with this before. I'm his friend, aren't I? I should be there for him, right? And in mind, I set the book down, place my free hand on his shoulder, and somewhat firmly grip him, as if me applying pressure is weakening whatever kind of state of mind he's in. Zero? Is everything okay? After a moment, he seems to have calmed down enough to bring himself up from at the desk and look towards me. That's how I move my hand from his shoulder. Yeah, I'm alright now. It's just I saw your eyes doing this crazy thing! <laughs> I <laughs> saw so, 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 so your eyes going crazy, Yuri. You scared me. <laughs> what if he was just like, I saw your eye. Leave your face. <laughs> it's the fucking act two thing where her eyes just he all went over there. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, huh? Well, what the fuck was that? Yuri was like, oh, <laughs> Rampy, no. <laughs> and he's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's silent. Like she's she's looking like, she's, like forward, silent the entire moving. time, and then she's just like. Rampy! Everyone's like, oh! <laughs> you say, or he's like, ah! <laughs> Monica's she's like, not even looking at the, she's like, not even looking at the book anymore. Monica's like, Jesus! <laughs> Yuri, what the hell? <laughs> 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 
I just don't do well with really loud sounds. Hmm. I understand. Uh, as long as you're feeling all right. Are you feeling all right? <laughs> yeah, um... I was a little scared there for a moment. It is then that both of us noticed Monica walking over to the closet to see what exactly has happened. Sayori en route with her. Natsuki, what happened? I'm fine. I only fell, like, a foot or something, okay? Oh, she fell from the chair. All right, all right. Just making sure you're not hurt at all. I said I'm fine. I can handle myself. Actually, Monica, I'm dying. <laughs> if you say so. Now that I have everyone's attention, we should begin poem sharing now. Oh my god, we haven't even poem shared yet. This is, you know, oh my this god. is the longest. We've been here for days. <laughs> We're gonna need some time for my announcement afterwards. 3.40 p.m. All right, this is probably a good time to stop. All right. <laughs> I don't know what just happened with that whole thing. All right. So, to give... <laughs> I really feel like that... I don't... I really feel like the whole Yuri adventure thing. Now, I wouldn't have... I feel like I wouldn't be super hard on it. If it was short, you know, if it was just like a little short thing that didn't go on for too long, then I'd be like, all right, that was fine. You know, Yuri visualizing something, you know, Fruits did something similar. And, you know, like I've seen, and I think I've seen other mods do it too, you know, where it's like someone's telling a story and then they start like putting the characters on the screen for said story. I'm fine with that. If anything, that makes it more enjoyable for them telling the story, you know, it's like, I'm fine with that. But it's like, I felt like with that, that went on for way too long. <laughs> To a point where you start being like, what the fuck is even happening anymore? And there's also the fact that these are supposed to be important foreshadowing moments. And I think we mentioned it before. It kind of feels like that entire part feels kind of shitposty. <laughs> like, with the whole voice lines from, I'm assuming, other content creators, if I had to guess. <laughs> like, voice lines are that fucking Donkey Kong Country characters, <laughs> you know? You know, it just kind of feels, it's a little too out there, I feel like. Especially when it's supposed to be important foreshadowing. The war, yeah. yeah. That's kind of my whole opinion of that. But, um, I think that's from War, yeah, but yeah, um, that's really, yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that whole thing, but, you know, it's held. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, I guess before we end it, I was about to say, I usually like to wrap up my thoughts of what I've said today, but overall, I think that was, I think I, that, that was, mo I think most stuff so far has been pretty fine. Like, I think my only major problem so far is just references. <laughs> Um, uh, talk about the positives. I really like Yuri and MC's relationship. I like how, like I said, I think I mentioned it before. They, I like how weird. <laughs> they're they're both very socially awkward, but they both understand each other, and that's what makes it funny. <laughs> like they both understand how weird the other is because that's basically how they are. And I just I find that very amusing to see. You know, like they're very much they both understand each other. They both understand how weird each other to each other. It's completely normal to everyone else. We're like. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you know? So it's like, I, I do like that. And, yeah. For the most part, I don't think there's been any out-of-character moments or any of the girls. Uh, uh, but yeah, so far. Not, I was gonna say, usually Natsuki being a bitch more than usual, but I think she was pretty tame. And the, this the, she was pretty tame in this so far, so that's pretty good. Uh, so, yeah. I don't think there's any major issues. That was the, the, there are any major issues. Obviously, you know, there's the minor gripes I brought up earlier. Like, the music thing being kind of weird. And Sayori asking too many questions kind of felt like padding. But, yeah. I don't have any major... I mean, any more major issues. But, yeah. That is it. What about the vending machine? I think I mentioned the vending machine. The vending machine wasn't too bad. It's funny looking, for sure. But it's like there's nothing serious with it so i'm like it's definitely funny and it can kind of take you out the moment but it's nothing too egregious i'd say you know unless there's like some serious thing with a, like it's understandable why it was used but it's and it's like and it's only there for like a, a few seconds anyway so it's not like it's like a it's not like it's there in the background for so long and they have to have a nor like a conversation for such a long time with it it's only there for a few minutes so i'm like it's fine it's whatever it's funny, so I'll give it that. But yeah, if you'd like to download this for yourself, the link will be in the description below. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Zero. Peace. Bye!